Mohammed used to make a living by trading auto accessories in eastern rural Damascus. When war broke out in 2012, the family left their home for a mobile one. This is where my son sleeps, and this is for my wife and daughter. I sleep here in winter and outside in summer. We live near the park so that we can use the toilet and water, and we can wash up clothes and take bath here. Mohammed was injured when the motor bomb hit this park in 2014. He's out of a job, while his wife works in a shop earning 2,000 Syrian pounds per week. That's only about four dollars. Life is tough, but Muhammad tries to keep his children spirited. We cared about our children, and we know what they need. They don't feel the hardship of life, because we always ask them to play somewhere else and try to ignore where we are living. There are many shelters for displaced Syrians. Amenities may be basic, but it beats living in a van. Muhammad, however, things differently. We do have shelters and facilities in many places, but I think I still own this car and we can live independently. It's better this way than putting more pressure on the authorities. For the UN, the Syrian government and other humanitarian agencies, this ongoing war has already created more than enough pressure. There are more than 1,200 shelters across the war-torn country and more community centers are being set up. But these are not long-term solutions. The ultimate solution is definitely a political solution, and we need the international community to be aware of this. The only solution for the Syrian crisis is a political, peaceful solution. But for now, Mohammed and his family must adapt to this life in a van. He told us it's better to get used to it than to worry about life every day. Xu Dezhi, CCTV, Damascus, Syria.